Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my plugin reviews. This time we are going to talk about Automizer by Daniel Oloyomi. I probably pronounced that wrong, but whatever. It is a plugin that you can use to harmonize your vocals and it can sound like this. Now, of course, that sounds a little bit weird, but I still find it very fascinating. So I want to talk about this plugin. And once I'm done doing that, I will talk about my own method of vocal harmonization, because I have a method that just works 100% consistently with pitches and different scales. It has a good audio quality and it works in real time. And I just really like it. But yeah, first of all, we are going to talk about Automizer. <laughs> So first of all, we have to talk about how Automizer even works. We can see it on the interface a little bit. There are two sections here and the first one says input 1L Vox and the second one says input 2R ins. So this plugin kind of thinks that there are two different inputs and they are defined by the plugin being a stereo plugin. So this is sort of a sidechain thing, but without a sidechain input. And if you find that confusing, then just look at the stereo split here. The left channel has nothing on it because it just passes through the vocal sample. The right side has an audio receiver and the audio receiver receives the audio from the chords track. And you can see here chord estimate. So the plugin kind of tries to figure out what's the chord. At some point it gets a little bit wobbly though. Like why is that suddenly B major? B minor, I'm, I think. I mean, um, and yeah, and then it decides which notes the vocal, uh, the two different vocals should be. So there are two vocal layers, as you can see, indicated here a little bit, and they can have individual settings like panning one of them hard left and the other one hard right, which can sound pretty nice. Now the funny thing is, the transpose parameter here will not make it go on pitches that are out of the chords. So that's like something that comes before the intelligent harmony feature. And when it's turned off, then this whole plugin has no point. Oh, damn. Here we go again. Like, it just pitches the vocals a little bit around, but it does not do anything that it is designed for. So I don't know why you can even turn this off. You can turn something else on the autotune feature and then it will consider the key and scale that is selected here. But that currently wouldn't make sense unless we stay in chromatic mode because when I checked the notes with Kirui, I found out that this is in B melodic minor scale and there is only harmonic minor available here. So I don't know. Also, it just adds even more artifacts when I have autotune turned on. So the autotune feature in Automizer should be avoided in my opinion, but the transpose feature, which should actually be located around here because it works together with the harmony stuff is cool. Yeah, attack. I guess this relates to the retune speed of the autotune because we also have similar settings here for the voices. You 
you have to go really low with these values for them to really make the vocals kind of snap. More or less, the parameters are not scaled very nicely. You have to be very careful with them. Now, some other cool controls that you have here are the harmony type. You can let the vocals be high and even higher. You can let them be low and even lower, a little bit high and a little bit low, or a lot higher and a lot lower. Let's listen to all of these options. <laughs> So you can, as you can see, turn off or on form and preservation, which is kind of cool. Turning it on will make it sound will make it attempt to sound more natural. But since I feel like this plugin doesn't sound very natural in the first place, I rather lean into the artificial side of the sound by turning it off and give each voice a very unique formant by having one going up and the other one going down from the original position. You can also dial in some vibrato. <laughs> The values of the depth parameter are stepped and it is just a little sine wave based vibrato. So if you need a very quick vibrato, this is fine. If you need something more complex, you should probably get my plugin Nell if you don't have it yet which is a fully fledged vibrato with a lot of different types of modulators. Now I could try to say something about these parameters here because they have an influence on how the algorithm detects what chord is currently playing. But even if you read the manual about spectral roll and spectral widening, you don't really get in what kind of situations it would be most beneficial to use them. And I have a little bit of a suspicion about that, but I don't really wanna make any assumptions now and it's also not much of a big deal. I guess you should just keep them on the default settings at all times. Anyway, this plugin has a lot of problems. For example, if you deactivate it and activate it again, which is also the case when you are reopening your door project, then it loses a lot of its settings, like the key that I had decided for here or the fact that I wanted to hard pen these things or the attack values that I selected. I'm not even sure if it remembered anything that I told it. So you cannot really trust this plugin. If you want to use it, you should probably bounce the results as fast as possible. The moment you like them, you should bounce them so that you don't have to deal with that anymore. Also, it is not latency compensate. So when I turn off time shift and play it together with the dry signal, it sounds like this. Oh. So as you can see, I kind of guessed that it's 60 milliseconds of latency. That seems about right, but I'm not quite sure. You cannot be sure. And that's why I want to show you my method now, which sounds like this. So as you can hear, my method has no problems with latency. It has a clean and consistent sound quality and no weird artifacts at pitch changes. And the reason for that is because I use a very distinct combination of plugins that just have the best of all worlds combined together. First of all, there are five layers here and all of the layers have the same plugins in them, but with different settings. You can already see it indicated by the numbers here that the major difference between these layers is that they happen on different transposed values. So for example, the minus five layer has inner pitch on minus five. I chose inner pitch because inner pitch is a pitch shifter plugin with great sound quality. I'm not a big fan of the parameters here, but the sound quality of the time stretcher and pitch shifter is just really transparent. So I use this plugin whenever I want to have some pitch shifting that doesn't sound too granular. The pro version also comes with a time diff parameter. That is actually the only parameter that I really like because it really makes a difference to turn it up. It sounds much 
softer the higher you go. It also uses more CPU then, by the way, but sometimes it's worth it. And then inner pitch is followed up by an instance of BX Crispy Tuner, where I just typed in the values of the scale. Of course, it's not C custom, but it's B melodic minor, but anyway, it still works because I put the right values in here. And then you can just go ahead and choose anything you like as the other um, parameter values. I personally like to have it 100% snappy and even though it is 100% snappy, it will not sound as weird and snappy as Automizer does, which is cool. That's why I chose to do this with Crispy Tuner. Alternatively, if you want to use a free plugin, you could also just use Kerui but it will sound a little bit more distorted. Funnily, I initially wanted to do this with autotune, so I tried to choose B, but it only has minor, and you don't even know if it's harmonic minor or melodic minor, unless you know something about music theory, and I didn't want to put any effort on figuring that out, so I just chose Crispy Tuner, where I can type it in on the keyboard directly. This it would work even more in real time if I had selected the live mode in Crispy Tuna because this just had a terrible latency. That's also one of the reasons why I would have loved to use Autotune right now with its extremely low 2.5 milliseconds latency. But yeah, it is what it is, and at least it doesn't make any problems when I'm just playing back. Audio. You can also get creative with this technique and follow up these two plugins by anything you like. For example, a tool for panning the vocals around so that each voice has a little bit of a different place in the room or you could give every voice a unique equalizer so that they are standing out from each other a little bit more or something like that. I kept it simple on purpose here for the sake of this demonstration. So yeah, I don't mean to be rude to Daniel or Luyomi. I think the idea of this plugin is great. I just feel like it needs much more work to be really good. And if it was more like my technique, it would be more solid. Like a plugin like this does not need to have an audio input to figure out the chord. You could just give it the scale and then it can come up with fitting notes for the voicing already. So that makes it a little bit less error prone than having this step in between, I think. That's how I would have designed it. And of course, all of the workflow issues like why is autotune here, but the things that relate to it are down here. Um, and why is transpose here, but the things that relate to it here. You know, all this kind of stuff and why is this a sidechain input, but not really. There is so much weirdness going on in this plugin. It could be much better. And if it was much better, it would be a great plugin. That's why I wanted to show it to you because I really love obscure plugins like that. They might not always be usable a lot, but they can inspire you to try something new. Like they reminded me that I have a method for vocal harmonization that I didn't use for a while. That was pretty cool, I think.